guys, Victoria here. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I plan my grocery shopping trips here in Vienna, Austria. This episode is part of a series where I talk about saving money on groceries. I brought you tips and tricks on how to save your grocery bills. And then I went into discussing specific stores in Austria. I was talking about how I save money in Lidl, Billa and Eurospar specifically. If there is any further store that you would be curious about, Hofer, DM, even maybe not necessarily about groceries, then let me know in the comments down below. And in today's video, I am actually going to show you the process, how I put together my grocery list and how I go to the store. So how do I prepare before I do my groceries? Normally I do my grocery trips once a week. So I tend to stay away from grocery stores as much as possible and only do one trip a week. And I typically tend to do that on Fridays. And I explained it in the previous videos why I choose Friday as my shopping day. First of all, I like to avoid Saturday because Saturday, of course, a lot of people who are normally working during the weekdays are doing their groceries so I try to <laughs> avoid the stores on the weekend and I prefer to go Friday morning. I am actually a little bit late today because it is already Friday and it is 10 10 <laughs> exactly at the moment. Normally I would do the preparation for the trip for the grocery store trip the day before. I would go through this process and then I would already have my shopping list and go Friday morning, but this week was a very busy week for me, so I'm doing it a little bit differently all together in one go. Let's jump right in. So the first step of my preparation is that I start to put together a grocery list on the notes app on my phone, which I can also access on my computer. So I have this basically this running shopping list. As I finish something, when I'm cooking, an ingredient, anything I think of during the week that I either want to make or that I want to eat, I put that down on to this list. And so there is already quite a few items on my list. Some of these items actually I have already on the list from longer than a week, but last week I decided I don't need them because this week I didn't eat meals that require them, but the list has been <laughs> growing ever since. I normally have a generic list on the top and then depending on which store I go, and this is not predetermined, it will also depend on which store has the better sales during this weekend. So I either go to Hofer and Spar or Lidl and Spar, or maybe I also go to Billa sometimes, not very often. Most of the times I would say I do Lidl and Spar, the combination of the two, but sometimes if I need something that I can only buy in Billa, or if I look at the flyer and they have very good sales, then I go to Billa too, or I leave out Spar in that case maybe. So it's like not always exactly the same, but these are the kind of stores that I go to and I typically go to two of these stores at least. So depending on the store, I also have for each specific store some items which I either always buy there like little the tomato sauce the bio tomato sauce is the best price next to the um, inspired the canned white beans are the best price when I need to get the, this paper bag for my trash for my bio trash then I can get it in Spar because I saw that they carry this paper version that I like which I couldn't buy for a while because I couldn't find it I don't only have a generic list, but I also have a list per store and I don't always buy these things, but I have them as an information for myself and as a reminder for myself. Whenever I finish something in the kitchen, I add it to the list and I already start out with a list, which is not necessarily only groceries, but anything that I can buy in this store. So some of the sometimes household and cleaning items as well are going on the list. Then in the next step, I actually do a meal planning. And in the meal planning, I look at my meal planner on Notion. I have a running list of meals, of recipes that I have made in the last two, three months. Here I have basically a name of the meal, the title, 
And then when I click into it, I can actually access the recipe directly so that when I make the meal, I can go on my phone, go into the meal and go directly to the link. And here, actually on the top, the meals that I have on the top, which are not marked with a check mark, they are things that I haven't made from the previous week's meal plan because... I planned for too many options and I didn't get to making the tuna salad and the carrot soup this time. And the ones which do have a check mark are the ones that I made in the past months at some point. It's not just one week's worth, but I leave all of them that I made in the past months because then I can also go through these for ideas and revive them and say like, hmm, these peanut butter noodles were actually very nice, so I want to eat them again. So I uncheck it and I move it on the top. And this will go on to my meal plan for the next week. And then I will have to go into the recipe and check if I have everything in the pantry and fridge and freezer that I need for this recipe. So in this particular case, I'm not going to make this recipe because I just had it recently, quite recently. I still have the tuna salad and the carrot soup uh, and the vegetable broth on the list. And I have all the ingredients for the tuna salad and the carrot soup. For the tuna salad, I also need bread and I make my own bread. So that's something that I need to put on my grocery list, actually. I need to buy in Eurospar some gluten-free bread flour. And actually, this is not the recipe that I'm making. I'm just going to put a new one. Uh, I'm just making the recipe from the um, packaging of the bread. Obviously, a tuna salad, a carrot soup, uh, and bread and vegetable broth will not be enough for me for the next seven days until I go to do my grocery routine again next Friday. So I need a few more recipes and then I go and search my Pinterest where I have recipes saved. I also search my Instagram where I also have recipes saved and I also have some cookbooks that I search for recipes. So right now I'm going to dive in and search for some recipes that I can make next week. I am looking for breakfast recipes right now and right away I found one that I would like to try which is just a simple piece of bread or toast and then have hummus and avocado on it. So I definitely have to put the avocado on my shopping list because I don't have any. And I don't want to buy hummus. I actually want to make my own hummus because I have chickpeas at home. I have dried chickpeas and canned chickpeas as well. So I just look up a hummus recipe on Pinterest among my own recipes and check if I have everything for it at home. So for this one, I need tahini, water, olive oil. Actually, I believe olive oil is already on my shopping list. Yes, because I am close to running out of it. So I already put it there during the week. I need ground cumin, salt, garlic, lemon, chickpeas. So I actually have everything for this one. If, I mean, olive oil I still have, but I definitely need to buy. So that's the only thing I need to put on the list. And now I can add on my Notion, I can add hummus on my list. And I can copy the recipe into in here so that when I am ready to make the hummus, I have a reference on my phone directly. And I will also add, and this is a breakfast, and I can have that the whole week because when I make hummus, I usually make quite a lot. And then I'm also adding this onto the list.
This is uh, avocado, uh, bread, hummus, and just spices avocado topping. So I have everything. I will have to make my own bread, but I already put the bread ingredients on my shopping list. Oh, there is another one. Perfect. I can also put this one because it needs this one. It's an other breakfast with hummus. So I already have the hummus made anyway. I will already have the bread made anyway. And then I have some dry tomatoes in the fridge, which are already open, so I can use those up. And it would require the just spices hummus topping as one of the ingredients, but I can just use another spice mix that I have, so I don't have to buy that. Perfect. And then, actually for breakfast, I still have some tomatoes, so I can kind of have avocado, hummus, tomatoes, the dry tomatoes, like mix and match every morning a different one. So I think that's fine for breakfast, and I will look for lunch and dinner. I have here the tuna salad and the carrot soup, which when I make it, it will be enough for me probably for at least two lunches, the carrot soup probably even for longer, like also for dinners, because when I make a carrot soup, it's quite a big batch. I also have some frozen celery in my fridge, so I would like to make a celery soup. So I'm also going to bring this one up. And for this one, I think I need potatoes. So this one is onion, I have olive oil, I have garlic, I have, I have the celery, I'm going to use frozen celery, it's already in my freezer, vegetable stock, I'm using the dried broth powder, and what I need is potatoes, actually. Parsley I have and salt and pepper I have, so I just have to put potatoes on my shopping list for that particular recipe. And then for the rest of the week, I can just browse my Pinterest and look for some recipes that I feel like making from my saved recipes. I should probably make a dessert. Maybe not the zucchini bread because for that I would have to buy zucchini. Actually, I want to make a brownie and it's a, it's a beetroot brownie. It's very nice. So I definitely need to get beetroots for that. It's a gluten-free vegan brownie. So I need, I'm going to buy beetroots. It asks for two small beetroots. I don't know if I will be able to get fresh beetroots that I can cook them and use them, or I will buy the pre-cooked ones. If I buy the pre-cooked ones, that will be 500 grams. That's way too much for this recipe, but I can use the rest of it for a beetroot cream soup. And if I can just buy two pieces of small beetroots, then I will just go with that. And then I will just make this recipe. I need dates. I do have dates. I need almond butter. I might have to buy some almond butter, actually. I need almond milk. I have milk at home. I don't necessarily use almond milk. If I have another milk, non-dairy milk open in my fridge, I will just use whatever I have. Ground almonds. I recently bought a bag of almonds, so I can just ground those. I have cocoa powder. I have salt. I have baking powder. And I don't put the chocolate chips, I just leave it out. Actually, the only thing I need are the beetroots and maybe almond butter. I have to check how much I have in my almond butter, but I can also substitute it with peanut butter. And then I will put the beetroot brownie on the list. Okay, I still need some heartier meals. So let's go back to my Pinterest because I need something substantial to fill me <laughs> throughout the week. So I'm thinking maybe I could make chili if I don't see anything else that is definitely an option. All right, so uh, we have a lentil soup, we have the chili, we have a carrot soup, we have a tuna salad, we have then the breakfast. So basically, I just keep going, looking for recipes, 
as I said, on Pinterest or Instagram or in my recipe books, putting down the recipes that I like, checking what I need that I don't have at home yet that I need for each recipe. Normally, it is just a few items that I'm missing because I do have a stacked pantry. Usually, these are the fresh things that I will need to add, like fresh produce. Usually, that is the, those are the ingredients that I'm missing. And then I put together a list of meals for the next week that I think will be enough for the week. Usually, I have one or two extras left at the end of the week, so I plan a little bit over than what I actually consume, but I prefer that over not having enough food, <laughs> actually. And then the next week, I'm going to just repeat this process and go from there. Then the next step is that I look at the flyers of each store that I'm thinking of going to. So today I'm probably going to look at Lidl and Spar and depends. If I don't find many things that are good price in Lidl and that are worth picking up based on the flyer, then I actually just go to Hofer instead because Hofer is closer. But if there are multiple items on sale in Lidl that I would like to get, then I take the extra mile and I go a little bit further and go to Lidl to do the shopping. So um, I am part of the Lidl Plus membership, which is their loyalty program. And they send me every week, twice when the sales cycle starts, they send me their newsletter with the current sales cycles discounts. And from Thursday this week, we have already Easter stuff on sale. So they kind of have a highlights of whatever is on sale. They have tulips, which don't mind if I do pick up some tulips, actually. I like tulips which is not a grocery item but it's just a thing that I like to have for beauty purposes in my apartment as a decoration then they have some fresh stuff on sale and then here I can just click on Meer and Decken which will bring me to their website and there I can look at everything which is within this category which is the fresh offers so like meat and fruits and vegetables. This time they have some tomatoes on sale and some salad and apples and paprika. They also have some bakery items and, and meats. And then you can go through here actually of all the categories. Here is the deluxe Easter stuff. And then everything which is under this category is listed here. And then you can go through all these categories just make sure that they are valid from correct date. But I actually prefer, rather than looking at these categories, I mean, sometimes I just scroll through here, look at the, the categories that they have on sale, and then just leave it and say, like, none of these categories interest me. But today I actually want to look at the flyer, and I prefer to look at the flyer rather than in here, even though it has the same things, but it is organized a little bit differently. So here is the flyer. So now I will just go through these flyers and I write down anything that interests me from Lidl. And if I don't have many things, only like one or two items, that I, then it is not worth for me to go all the way to Lidl, then I will just go to Hofer. But basically what I do is that I go to one of the discounters to do the majority of my shopping, to buy most of the basics from my shopping list or anything from my shopping list which I couldn't find in any of the flyers on a discounted price, then I would buy it in Lidl, unless they are special items that are not available in the discounters. And then once I'm done in the discounter store with my shopping, then as the next step, I will go to the more expensive store, to Eurospar or Billa, to get the rest of the items which were either on sale in that store, in Spar or Billa, or are special things and are not available in Lidl and Hofer. So now I'm just gonna go through the flyers of Lidl and Spar, write down the things that I would like to buy and I will get back to you when I'm ready to go to the store. Okay, so interestingly, this Friday I'm going to do a little bit differently than most of the times. I'm not gonna go to Lidl because they didn't have any interesting sales for me. I mean, they had 
two things and none of those two things were groceries so i'm not gonna go there i'm gonna go to hofer to buy all the basics or everything that I couldn't find on sale anywhere else. And then I'm actually going to go to Billa because Billa seems to have quite a few things that I actually need and on my list on sale and a few other things that brought my attention. So I'm gonna do my second shopping in Billa, but I might still have to go to Spar afterwards for a few things which are on sale in Spar because they have some kiwis on sale and I will just check the other two stores how much the kiwis are there and if they are around the same price or cheaper then obviously I'm gonna get them at the other stores. They have celery on sale which I'm still contemplating. I have frozen celery but then maybe I can just use fresh instead since it's already on sale and use the frozen one later and um, the bread flour, the gluten-free bread flour. I will have to check if Billa has gluten-free bread flour and what is the price because the one in Eurosh Par is pretty good price so I might have to go there to pick it up but yeah the majority of the shopping will be done in Hofer and Billa today so here is my meal plan I have lunches dinners breakfast and a lot of these things are normally you know I don't just eat them once I cook for one person so I always have leftovers so I eat one meal usually at least twice if not three times or even more like the chili I will probably have chili like four five portions I could probably even just freeze one or two of those portions and then here is my shopping list so I have the generic shopping list which I will try to get it at the cheapest store which is Hofer and whatever I cannot get in Hofer I will buy it in Billa or Eurospar and then I will go to Billa because they have minus 25% on Iglo so I can get frozen broccoli and then I have then they have other things on sale that I can get. I also need tamari. There is probably a coupon in the app like a minus 25 or minus minus 30% coupon that I can use on one item at least that I can use on the tamari which is quite pricey but I can get it. I'm pretty confident that I will be able to get it like minus 25 or minus 30 percent off. I'm back. Um, well I've only been to Hofer so far and there are already so many people in the store. <laughs> I was kind of quick luckily but like all the trolleys were taken and Normally I like to go in the morning, first thing almost, because then there are just less people. So I prefer to avoid the crowd. Um, but I got quite a lot of things. Uh, my shopping included a few bigger ticket items. As you can see, I have gotten olive oil. It was one euro off. It was on sale. And a few other items like these coffees, obviously not just for the week. This is also for my long term pantry. I got some tomato, canned tomatoes because I only have one and I will need two for the, all the recipes that I will make. I got the packaged red beets or beetroots because they didn't have the other option but this is bio so I decided to go with this one. Got the, some of the fresh things that I wanted. I actually got a gluten-free sourdough bread just to have some gluten-free bread at home at all times I can put this in the freezer in case I don't have time to bake or I don't have the ingredients to bake a, a bread but yeah like mostly fresh stuff and a few more expensive things and I spent 36 euros and 53 cents which feels like a lot because I feel like I didn't get a lot of things but of course like this was nine euros in itself the olive oil and that was five euros in itself the coffee so now it's time to go to Billa I'm back from the second round and I've been to Bila and Spar and in Spar I spent 7 euros 66 cents got four things and in Bila I spent well let me show you I didn't buy many things actually in the two stores I got some yeast it was pay one get one for free the salmon was one euro off each if I got two the broccoli I got some extra I paid full price but I got some extra yield points for that the oranges were on sale I got this type of tamari this time instead of the one that I usually buy because I realized that this is cheaper so I'm gonna try this one now and that was from Billa and I paid 19 euros and 23 cents quite expensive actually and this was my most expensive product for which I got a 30% off 
I, there was one coupon in the store. And then in Spar I got four things. I got bio potatoes. I couldn't find any bio potatoes in Hofer nor Bila. I got my bread, flour, I got the celery because it was on sale and I got kiwis because they were also on sale and it was 766. So yeah, this is how I do my groceries. I hope you got some information that you are looking for in this video. I hope you enjoyed this summary of how I prepare for my groceries and how I do my shopping. I know that it might be a little bit too much in the sense that I'm going to three different stores just to do one week of grocery shopping. But I could also do this on different days. Like some people, they go to a grocery store every day or every second day. I don't do that. I save time during the week and I then invest a little bit of time on one dedicated day when I do it. And then I go to two, sometimes more, most of the times to two stores to do my groceries and then I try to get everything at the place where it is the cheapest. It doesn't always work out, but that is the idea. So anyways, thank you for taking along. If you are not a subscriber yet, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button and like this video if you got some useful information out of it. Make sure to check out the other videos in this series on how to save money on groceries in Austria and I'm looking forward to see you at my next videos. Until then, bye-bye.